My original story was um, how one voice can be a part of changing the world. One voice in 140 characters. But I'm changing that because I'm an educator and I can do that. I can change assignments. So I'm changing the story because it's more than just one voice. It's anyone's voice. And I think what hit me when my friend Mike Libby was talking this morning is that that 95% of the individuals that don't engage in social media, I don't think it has anything to do with the tools. I don't think it has anything to do with they lack training. What they lack is belief in their voice. And every day, I get to wake up. And the key is I get to. I get to do this job. I get to tell people they matter. I get to tell five-year-olds that they matter and that the world is waiting for their voices. And I get to tell grown-ups, bigger than five-year-olds, that they matter, that they're not just a small business and they're not just a teacher. I hate that word. I want to eradicate that word, just, because you're not just anyone. You are someone. And you are someone that has a contribution that the world needs. And I think that as citizens of this amazing space, with the tools that we are privileged to be a part of, that we have a chance to let someone else know they matter. And a few days ago, I got that chance. I carry my computer everywhere because I call it my baby, even though I do have two Abby and Ronnie, no offense. But I carry this everywhere, it's my lifeline. And um, I don't take for granted one ounce of anyone's attention. And so I was very excited about the speech that I was able to do to a thousand educators with the topic of trusting strangers. Because in schools we teach that strangers are bad and that the web is just full of these strangers in their pajamas tweeting at 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and that we miss out on all these opportunities to be moved and to, to help someone else know they matter and to matter to them. And so the speech was on trusting strangers, ironically. I didn't realize I'd been living that speech the night before. What added to the excitement is I, get, I was able to co-present with a friend of mine, Steve Barker. So it was the first time that we were able to draw a network of business and a network of education together. And I happened to have his presentation on my computer. <laughs> and I left it on the airplane, <laughs> literally. I left it on the airplane. And by the time I landed in Chicago, and I went through that oh-so-friendly O'Hare airport, <laughs> and by the time I got to a human being that would help me there, um, my laptop had flown to Pittsburgh. And then it visited Pennsylvania and multiple other places. And for six and a half hours, I wasn't even sure if it was on the plane. So it took six and a half hours to get a human confirmation that my life was on the plane. And I hadn't yet told Steve, so was our, com so was our presentation. So it was about 11.30. The speech was at 9 o'clock in the morning. It was about 11.30. I finally got the confirmation from O'Hare that, yes, we do have the computer in our hands. I still didn't know what to do. And I was an hour trip to O'Hare. I was in downtown Chicago. I said, what is my speech on? Trusting and believing in the best of human beings. I have to live that. I can't stand up in front of a thousand people and say, oh, I, I'm saying this, but I don't believe it. So I hailed a cab on Michigan Avenue, and I jumped in the front seat, which kind of freaked the cab driver out. <laughs> and I grabbed his hand. I got to borrow your hand. I grabbed his hand, and I'm like, you are about to save my life. He's like, do I need to take you to the hospital? Do I need to take you to the hospital? No, 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 you don't have to take me to the hospital, but you will be saving my life. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to O'Hare, and you're going to get my baby. Probably not a good thing to say. He's like, baby's out of here? So no, it's my computer, which is my baby. I call her my baby. And you're going to save it. You're going to go to O'Hare, and you're going to get my computer. You're going to bring it back. And here's why it matters. Because tomorrow, I have the chance of a lifetime. I have the chance to bring the business community and the education community together and tell the world that they need to start mattering, to stop all this measuring and obsess about mattering. And the core of my speech is about the need to trust and believe in the best of people. The need to look one another in the eye and turn stranger in a nanosecond to friend. And to prove that that happens every day. So you are my friend and you're going to save me. So I will see you in an hour. And so he drives off into my sunset and I go back into the hotel and the concierge is like, oh, did you get his cab number? I went, 
Shit. I do not have his cab number. They're like, it's okay. Where's his card? Where's the phone number? I go, dang it, I forgot to get that too. And they're like, seriously, lady, you just sent some guy in a cab off to O'Hare to get, okay, good luck with that. I go, nope. I trust this man. I believe in people. I trust him. I looked into his eyes. I held his hand. He will be back here in an hour. And they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, we'll see that. So I waited with them in the lobby for an hour and gave them a little lesson on Twitter and um, went upstairs. And then I brought my computer because you have to see this. So, um, well, right before he, he was there, when he got to O'Hare, he calls me. He's like, Angel, Angel, I got your computer. I got your baby in my hands. I'm going to send you a picture of your baby. So he sends me a picture of my baby. I'm like, that's her, that's her. Bring her home, bring her home. Like, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. So about two minutes before he gets there, he drives up and goes, Angel, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. It's going to be okay. She's coming to you. And I'm like, okay. So when I walked out of the hotel, this is what I saw. Like a scene from Pretty Woman. But it was like 1.30 in the morning. He's holding my computer like this with his legs crossed. I hope I don't fall. Laying on his cab, just waiting for me. <laughs> my computer in his hands. And I just hugged him. I first kissed the computer. I hugged him. I burst out crying. And then I went to take a picture with my camera phone. But then my camera phone was dead and I forgot the the cord on another plane, which is just another story. But the message and the moral of this story is that if you give someone, anyone, a chance to matter, they will exceed your expectations. I get to do that every day, and so do you. You get to make someone matter. So the next time someone says, this is what I have in my hamburger, or this is what I put in my coffee, it's not silliness. It's human beings fighting for the right to matter. They're fighting in the world to say, I exist, and you have a chance. You have a chance when somebody shares that tweet about their coffee or about the cute shoes that they just bought. The other, these are very cute. You can say, wow, I noticed you. I see you. I'm so glad you came today. And so I'm saying that to you. I see you. I noticed you. You're giving up your most precious commodity today, which is your attention. I will never take that for granted. And it is an honor to stand here. It is an honor to share this story. And if I had a picture of my friend, my cab driver, I would show this. Because he is anybody. He is everybody. And this is our chance to be the kind of world that we deserve and the kind of world that we dream it to be. So. You matter. I just want you to know that. I don't know if that was 10 minutes or not. Because I usually say, oh my God, I do sometimes. <laughs>